What's quack a lacking guys, I'm Adak Quack here and welcome back to another episode on the channel. So this is going to be a follow up to the last one we did where we had a look at the Irish SBCs and we discussed how it was very like, very much like anyway, EA was just putting coins back onto the market in order to replenish all the coins they've taken away from the likes of Squad Builder Challenges or the half price coin packs that they put on the market, etc, etc. Now if EA are using this to regenerate the amount of actual coins available on the market, it's going to be for a reason more than likely. And this is how I think that Foot Birthday is going to tie into this. So as you can see, we've got a team here that are full of 86 rated plus players, except for Maris, because I couldn't really think of a very cheap right mid, so I just threw him in the mix anyway. Now the reason all these players are here is because I can see something very similar to Foot Christmas happening. Foot Christmas? Footmas. So at Footmas, they released all these squad builder challenges for players with a certain number on their kit in relation to what day of the month it was. Now personally, I think that for Foot Birthday, they'll do exactly the same, except for they're related to the players' birthdays opposed to the foot numbers, <laughs> foot numbers opposed to the kit numbers that they wear. Now the good thing about this is nobody's going to be investing in this. Everyone's going to be investing ready for the Team of the Week Squad Builder Challenge or marquee matchups or the League SBCs. Nobody can think outside of the box these days. The few people that do, they make a killing. Everybody else kind of, it's not a bad thing and I'm not putting people down, but they get used to something so it's routine or they'll follow advice they see somewhere or they'll do exactly as they're told which is the worst kind of investments because when it goes wrong you have no understanding of what you've done wrong all you know is you've lost a ton of money. Now if we're investing in these big players they're currently at such a low point but we do run a little bit of a risk. So the risk is that nothing's released, foot birthday comes around, loads of packs are thrown on the market, these players flood the market and the prices drop. But I just can't see EA letting their premium players drop to such a level. Now, the whole point of events such as Foot Birthday is for EA to generate massive amounts of pack sales. So we're going to see loads of lightning rounds, special packs. We might even see half price coin packs just to sink back some of those coins that they generated on the market. That could be the sole reason they did it, if I'm honest. But we're going to see packs galore either way. Now, the whole point of opening packs is to get those premium players. That's why we've seen this year EA have included a load more special cards, because it raises the hype and it makes people more excited to open these packs. Now, if they're letting their premium players, so if they're letting, for example, a walkout such as Czech. Now, Czech's an 88 rated player. He's a walkout, so it should be a big deal when you get him. But he's currently going for about 9, 10,000 coins on the Xbox market at the moment. That shouldn't be the case. If you're pulling an 88 rated player who's a walkout, it shouldn't be just, okay, great, that basically pays for a fraction of the coins that I just spent on that pack. It should be huge. It should carry some value. Now, they've dropped to such a low point at the moment that if there's no special cards or no good team of the week, people just aren't going to open the packs in the masses like the EA would want them to. But if you release some more of those player squad builder challenges, then they're going to grow and they're going to have the demand again. Now, I'm not expecting them all to be high rated, obviously. We'll see some lower rated fan favourites. The likes of Emery Chan last time was absolutely incredible. And he's still a staple in my team, actually. But we also could see some big names. So we could see the likes of any of these players on this list. We could even see a Czech card. We could see a Philip Lahm card. We could see a David Silva card. We could see absolutely anything. And to get these kind of players, you're not going to need to submit an 84 rated team. You're going to need to submit something that was similar to the likes of the Vidal SBC or the Aubameyang SBC, where you needed a really high rated squad. And in some cases, you actually needed to submit the player themselves, like in the Obama Yang or the Vidal one. But we're not going to invest in that because it's impossible to guess. But if those kind of squad builder challenges come out, which I can see happening, a couple of weeks of releasing three new players a day, then we're going to be ready for it. We're going to have all of these high-rated players that we bought for literally discard value. Well, not discard value, but literally the lowest point on the market. And we can make a killing. Now, how does it benefit EA if they release such squad builder challenges? Well, these squad builder challenges, they remove cards from the market. Yes, they're not removing physical coins as such, but they're getting rid of the cards. So say there's 100 checks on the market at the moment, and he's selling for 10,000 coins. Then 10 of them are submitting to squad builder challenges. He becomes that much rarer, so there's only 90 cards of him now. So the demand would stay constant, but the supply is reduced by 10%. So his price will rise. 
He's also got a use in the squad builder challenge, so people are paying a premium for him, so his price rises yet again, until you get to the point where he's going for 20, 30,000, or whatever coins. Now, because all of these players, along with potentially the 84s, 83s from a Team of the Week squad builder challenge or whatever, are worth more, suddenly packs have more value. So people can justify opening packs. If you were going to spend 10, 20 pounds on packs, and you were going to maybe get 10,000, 15,000 coins from it, you... You'd still do it probably because we're all stupid. I do it. I open a ton of packs and I know that I'm not going to get anything. But if you were opening them knowing that you've got a much better chance of just getting 30, 40,000 coins with awful pack luck, you're going to be much more inclined to do it and then spend those coins on something else. Or as EA are probably going to try and guide you to do, spend these coins on the squad builder challenge. So in essence, what you will be doing is you'll be spending a load of money on packs to convert to coins to convert to an untradeable player. So that money has indirectly just bought you an untradeable player that you can do nothing with. So EA, EA have given you an untradeable player for your money. Now you're going to be in a situation where you need more packs and more coins down the line, whether it's the next day, whether it's the team of the season or whatever. So you'll come back and you'll buy more. It's not like the coins you're receiving are going to be transferable or spendable at a later date. This is how it benefits EA. Not only are they driving hype, they're increasing the prices of their premium players, which encourages pack sales, and then encourages repeat business because you have untradeable players. On top of this, it's such a cool event. Everybody loved this event. I'd love to see it come back, if I'm honest. And EA knows that. They've done so much more this year to work with the player base. And releasing something like this would really get everyone, in, well, everyone excited, basically. The anticipation and speculation on which player could be released the next day or all the research we do into their birthdays, it just seems a very easy transition. They've already done it once. Sticking it in again isn't going to do them any harm and it can only benefit them. Now, this is what leads me on to the second point in here. So we're just going to actually, let's jump onto the transfer market here. Now, there's always been special cards in FIFA, but this year we've seen more special cards than we've ever seen before. So if you remember, we had Scream cards, we've had Movember cards, we've had Team of the Group Stage cards, we've had Inform cards, we've got Man of the Match cards. It goes on and on and on. We've even got the Irish ones that have just come out. If we look back at Footmas, then we used all these cards. So in these Squad Builder Challenges, it gave these cards that were discard value a purpose. So people that had them, people that packed them and kept them, just hoping they'd be worth something at some point, actually got some value for them. So people were submitting the screen cards, people were submitting the Movember cards, people were submitting Inform cards. And now we're at a stage in the game where we have a ton of Man of the Match cards on the game. We've even had one to watch Squad Brother Challenge where people were submitting these. The logical next step is going to be these one to watch cards. Does Sani not even sell for 100,000? Wow, he's really cheap actually. Might be because he's a left forward. Anyway, sorry, I digress. So if we're picking up these Man of the Match cards for their discard value, again, make sure you pick up a good league, good nation, good position, etc., etc. We're not having any kind of risk. But if EA released that exact same kind of squad builder challenge, and again, these cards are needed, then we're going to be absolutely quids in because... There's going to be massive demand for it, just like what happened at Footmas with everyone rushing to buy the Movember cards. Now, the market wasn't short of Movember cards, but they tripled in price, easily tripled in price. If these players are bigger, and now that everybody has a lot more coins in general, so from the likes of Weekend League, from all of the rewards that have been given out, from more people buying the game, from more squad builder challenges, from more games played, from more Weekend Leagues played, and more packs from that, everybody's got more coins on the market which means a lot more people will be enticed to complete these, which means that these cards could increase more than before. So if you're looking for a slightly riskier, slightly different investment, these Man of the Match cards are definitely what I'd invest in myself. And to be honest, I'm going to have a look at this when i got a bit more time and study it a bit better, so I know that I'm picking up some smart cards. But don't be paying more than discard. You can pick up, I think you can pick up like 83s, 84s for discard, and they're going to have some kind of value. An 87 summer for 60,000. That's got no kind of relevance, so I was just kind of intrigued. Anyway, yeah, all of these cards potentially could have massive value to us if EA do repeat the cycle. But anyway, going back to what we were talking about to start with, picking up the players that could be potentially used, where am I? Picking up the players that could potentially be used in a repeat of the Footmas SBC, so the high-rated players that are going to be in demand and are a lot scarcer on the market than other cards, seems like a no-brainer to me. 
just because it benefits everyone. Anyway, I'm going to end the video there before I keep waffling on again about absolutely pointless stuff. I hope that you guys at least understand what I'm trying to say, even if you do disagree with me. But if you've got anything to add or any questions or a conversation, drop it down in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed this kind of video. And if you could subscribe as well if you're new, that would be incredible. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.